never thirsty. Never thirsty. We've got Danny Gez who's joining us, who's a uh, fashion uh, maven who's done clothing lines with some of the biggest celebrities on the planet. And he has a great musical background with us as well, obviously. Back in the day, he was uh, a huge, one of the catalysts for me even getting started in music was Danny Gez. Uh, but Danny, music and fashion go together. It's like a perfect fit, is it not? I mean. It, it, uh, it is, uh, yeah. It, what, what, the first, uh, it's funny, I just spoke to Eve uh, yesterday, but that was my first artist that I did a collaboration with uh, Fetish. And that really was like the biggest thing because like I knew you and I know you like, had other successes and you were working with huge labels and huge brands on a manufacturing, on a retail market, all of it. But when you went out on your own and that was your baby and Eve was like the pop, the hottest artist on, on the planet at that point, how did you even get, you know, <laughs> that was such a big deal and it did so well. Like, Yeah, we, uh, I met through her lawyer, um, Brad Rose, who ended up becoming my lawyer, and he represents like Pharrell and Jay Z and Beyonce, everyone, and um, and then we just really got along. And then her her manager Troy Carter and I became best friends. And Eve, my daughter, and Eve's birthday. My daughter was born on her birthday, and then she became her godmother, and we became just wow. Very close. But like Eve is like family. She's like at your house for yeah, I just, yeah. She's in Atlanta right now filming her new. TV show with Brandy. I just spoke to her yesterday, actually, funny enough. So that that clothing line, now your motivation, because I know that you like grew up in the world of clothing and like if you didn't get into clothing, you would be crazy because it was like- it, uh, one, one second, my daughter's trying to get out of school. Sorry, hold on. Bella, hi, I'm with Stu, Stu the Jew. Hold on, let me put on mute. We are uh, seeing parenting live. And when I met Danny, he didn't even have a kid. And now his daughter is trying to get out of school. But uh, I don't know. We guess we lost Navelle, but uh, I was having a good talk with him. And hopefully we can catch up with him soon, Neff. You can get him back in the books. Yeah, Beat Geeks. Is this his Instagram on the bottom, at Beat Geeks? Yeah, and I, yes, I wonder yes. if Wirefang's going a little wild, just like throwing people. <laughs> yeah. We'll have yeah. to talk about yeah. that. You want, the, you, want, you, want, you want the biggest one ever to come on? No. It's a big one. Huh? Well, you know, but but we're in the middle of interviewing Danny. Okay, sorry, I'm back. My daughter needed to to get out of school. Yeah, so music is a is a is a big deal. Uh, oh, I, I I just want to see if I can assess this, okay? Because this is part of you know my shtick. I want to see if I can like, assess this correctly. Okay. Um, you're in the clothing business. That's your family business. So that's you know it's like if if you didn't take the the torch in that business world people would think you're crazy because like that's what your dna it's in your dna yeah. but you loved music your passion was music i know that personally because you were working with me and pushing me to do music and others and you had big uh you know a big vision of like where where you could do with the music world i think that you pivoted and is it possible that you realized there was an aha moment where you were like wait a minute my contribution with music can be through the clothing lines and I can change the way that artists make revenue, like because artists weren't doing clothing lines like the way you were doing it. So no. was is that? Am I right in that sort of frame of thinking of like trying to find, carve your lane in the music world? And, and is yeah, that I think I think actually you're right. There weren't a lot of collaborations, but um, and I did in the beginning just a dumb me just wanted to manage you in the music. <laughs> My wife at the time loved you. You're very you're still very talented, but. Um, I think it was just about management and music first. And then I realized I don't like having somebody telling me how to make money and when to make money, which is uh, the entertainment industry. So I love the fashion industry. And um, and there was a way to utilize the marketing from, from the marketing budget of an artist, an uh, album release, couple it with the launch of an apparel line. And make it grow. And when we signed Eve, she did a collaboration with uh, Gwen Stefani called, uh, I don't know the name of the song, but who's that girl? Like, who's that girl? Da, da, da. Yeah. I forgot what it's called. Wow. Uh, yeah. So we did that. And then from there, I, I did a deal with Justin Timberlake. That one went to Stratosphere. Yeah, that uh, was 
That was crazy. It was like a jeans line and an upscale sort of Macy's sort of line, right? No, no, no. It wasn't Macy's. It was Bloomingdale Sachs. Bloomingdale's. My bad. My bad. Yeah. No, there's a difference. <laughs> No, we don't have either of them. It was it was one hundred and eighty dollars. Oh, there was no reason Justin should have had his own clothing line. He doesn't know how to dress, and so it was the relationships that I had with Nordstrom and Bloomingdale's, and I really elevated everything on a manufacturing level. So I gave him permission to be in the fashion industry. And so that was a big that was big because like after that the floodgates opened and everybody started getting into it. But yeah, you know, everybody succeeded in that, but. I think everything, you know, changes for a reason. For sure, for sure. Now, do you see artists now that like, and I'm sure Navel can comment on this too, but like, it's like the staying power of artists, well, he'll come back maybe. The staying power of, of an artist now, the shelf life isn't like it used to be. Like, I can't even think of like, who's an artist that's came out in the last five years that can go on a stadium tour. There's probably very few. So it's like, mm -hmm. how how do you know if there's like a long-term play here? Like, how can you spot an artist and know whether it's going to be? You don't, you, you, you don't. You, you only work with people that have had longevity. And because you sell a million albums or 10 million streams now, it doesn't mean you can sell clothing. Um, and either, you know, there's a big difference between merch, merch and an apparel line. Those one thing has nothing to do with another. Right. Um, and the development of a real clothing line is about a half a million dollars to just your ticket to entry if you know what you're doing. Yeah. So well, merch is completely different. Now, I, I want to ask your opinion on this. Now, like Navelle, who was talking about the Backstreet Boys, I mean, those guys obviously made a, make a fortune on merchandise. But I want to ask you, Danny, as just like an outsider, someone who's in fashion and loves music. So you look at someone like Wu Tang Clan, who started out as sort of merch, but sort of morphed into a clothing line. Like, is that an example? Is that a blueprint that anybody else is going to be able to follow again? No, <laughs> is that like, will because, we ever see that again? No. Wu, Wu Wear, funny enough, we actually used to manufacture. They partnered up with an apparel company. It was a license. It wasn't them doing it on their own. Um, I think the partner had the license of Tommy Hilfiger, then they took Wu Wear. But they had a guy or a company that did high fashion urban wear. So they knew how to create a collection and a lifestyle. It wasn't just t-shirts and sweatshirts and hats. So when they really elevated everything on another level, that's when Wu Wear really took off. Yeah. And then they but I don't those days don't really exist. I mean like Travis Scott, when he does a drop, and I think like pop-ups are, are are really amazing. And social media, when I was doing this, social media didn't even exist. So you'll get a pop, you know, you'll get a hit, you'll be able to sell sell out a thousand jeans, maybe. But it doesn't mean there's no you go there. into you go into stores where young people shop, and still twenty years later, Wu Tang Clan T-shirts are still there, front and center. Like, yeah. Like, what's going to be the act today that you're going to see 20 years from now? Is there going to be Lil Nas X t-shirts? Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, but that's merch. So there, Bloomingdale's will buy merch. Right. Uh, Bloomingdale's will buy concert t-shirts. And that's what it is, merch. <coughs> but it, it, there's no longevity to it. If you want to build a $100 million company, uh, there's no longevity to it. So artists out there that have big dreams, you better have big money if you want to exactly. make this thing happen. You said it's half but, a million hey, can dollars. Can I ask you something? Yeah, go ahead. Is develop. it a movement? Like, sorry, it, it, I just want to ask, is it a movement when you kind of like the whole move? Because for me, it feels a like, little bit like a movement how Wu-Tang came in with it and kind of like... Was it because of there was a gap for it, or were there the right timing for it? Yeah, that's a great question. Like, why Wu Tang? Why did that work? So that's a great question. Um, everything is about timing. Everything is about um, it, honestly, everything is about timing. You're 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 100 right. It's uh, um. It's timing. <laughs> no, it, it is timing. It's like riding a hit. <laughs> what, what, I'm sorry. I mean, I think the thing about the thing also about like Wu Tang Clan, like if you can compare them to like, you know, in that early 90s, 1989 to 1993, 94, we'll call it, 
like a we're talking some like game changing artists came on the scene that are yeah, still but old, old dirty bastard if you remember you met him too at my office sure. you know yeah. you're not you're not dealing with the problem with dealing with the hip hop community as well is uh, including Eve funny enough is nobody's ever on time so you can't really um, <laughs> schedule like in store appearances or photo shoots or stuff like that it was very um, up in the air so that kind of played to it. And everybody thought that because you sold a platinum album, you could sell a million t-shirts or whatever. Never thirsty. Never thirsty.